Hello pilots, welcome back to the next video. My name is Adam and in this video we're specifically talking about the difference between Orbex versus Mega Scenery and how you can optimize it for your particular type of flying. First off though, before we uh, go into that, we need to find out what type of pilot you are. You're either going to fall into one of three categories here. You're either going to be a general aviation pilot which means you're only going to fly like Cessnas and single engine or twin engine aircraft. Or you're going to fly heavy airliners like a 737 or a 747. The third category is pilots who like to fly both. And depending on their mood, they'll just jump into either one. I kind of fall into that one. But there are uh, other pilots who just strictly fly general aviation aircraft and those who just strictly fly heavy airliners. Now, your sim is going to be very different compared to which plane you fly. And really, to maximize uh, your performance and reduce the risk of errors, you should really configure your sim depending on the plane you're flying. If you're flying a 737 and you've got your sim configured for low level flying then you're gonna have stutters you're gonna have performance issues and you're possibly gonna even have crashes whereas if you're configured for flying at 40,000 feet it's gonna be smooth even with planes like PMDG installed so let's look at the two uh, companies Orbex and Mega Scenery Earth let's see what products they do first off so Mega Scenery Earth they develop uh, aerial photography textures for your sim. Uh, they cover all of America. They're covering, at the moment, Australia. They cover the UK, Germany, Spain. Uh, there's a few locations in Europe as well they do, but it's mainly America. And they do aerial photography only. So what is that? Well, when you look at their files, uh, it is exactly what you see in the real world. It's an actual picture of the building or an actual picture of the tree like the forest or an actual picture of the city that you're looking at. You're not looking at a representation digitally made like Orbex do. You're looking at aerial photography. But the only problem with pictures is they're all flats. They're, they're all 2D. There's no 3D definition to it. And that's where Orbix are different. They create photo real textures, which are manipulated in the computer, so they're not actual real, but they are photo real. And they also put in auto gen trees and buildings and bridges and other things to make it really pop out with a 3Dness. And then the ground textures are photo real textures put underneath that. And what you get is a real nice looking sim um, with a lot of buildings and trees in it. Now uh, Orbex do uh, smaller regions as well as covering the entire globe. Uh, their smaller regions only cover bits of America, the UK and bits of Europe and all of Australia but they are expanding. Now a simulator, I think we need to talk about how a simulator displays the world um, because this will help you understand A, what type of products you need to go purchase uh, versus um, how you're going to put them into your sim so you don't get suddenly black textures in your file in your sim or things put in the wrong place or you know we're talking about the scenery library here there is a correct order at which it needs to go in um, so let's look at what the uh, simulator does or what it is rather so your simulator and it doesn't matter which simulator you're using FSX P3D or X-Plane they all handle it the same way it's like a cake you know and like a cake has layers your simulator has layers as well so the bottom layer is the core code of your simulator okay it's uh that sits on the base the bottom okay on top of that you'll have what's known as the mesh the elevation mesh and this tells your core code this is how tall mount everest is 
and this is how low the valleys go and this is the difference of everything else in between um, there is default mesh put into your simulator and then there is mesh that you can buy and there is mesh you can get free available on the internet doesn't matter really which one you go for they all do the same thing they all tell the simulator how high a mountain is how high a hill is and how deep does a valley go and it kind of defines the shape of it as well but it does only does it in a wireframe way there's no textures involved it's just pure elevation data you know how high is this mountain and how craggy is it now your default sim doesn't do a good job of it to be honest it's very basic so mountains tend to become molded hills like very rounded and valleys tend to not be as deep as they actually are in real life now if you were to put mega scenery earth photo real textures on your default um, mesh as it's called then it's gonna look okay you know it's gonna look better than your default textures of your sim are because mega scenery earth only deal in textures okay um, which is the third layer of your cake first layer is your core simulator the second layer is the mesh okay and the third layer is your textures of the base of what goes on your mesh so globe uh, orbex do a global base as well okay just like mega scenery do a global base they handle it very differently so uh pictures that are generated from orbex are different than the photography used from mega scenery earth but they both have the same function as they both tell the sim what a forest is they both give the textures for a field for corn for all the various different types of landscapes like deserts and water and stuff like that um, and that's your third layer okay then on top of that you get your vector data now your vector data is basically telling your simulator where your roads are where your rivers are where your bridges will be um, and it doesn't really contain the files for this it's more the location for it okay um, your next level is your land class data now this basically says this location is a town this location is grass that is where your ocean is that's is where your beach is and these are rocks again doesn't contain the textures it just defines the location in the sim of where everything is okay your textures like mega scenery is all that information okay so when you stack up these layers like a cake and kind of look down upon them as a see-through thing you know when you combine everything you see the world as you see it okay so basically what we're saying is here you've got your mesh at the bottom or your your code for your core sim on the bottom but you've then got your mesh on top then you put your land class data on top of that and then your global base textures on top of that your vector data sits at the top and all that combines to showcase the sim mega scenery replaces your textures okay but the the problem is your textures and your global base for orbex are the same thing mega scenery earth textures and global base from orbex are exactly the same so when you use mega scenery in in a certain area you're replacing global base so you won't have that feature for that area if you're using mega scenery earth you might as well disable the land class the vector and the global base for that area because you ain't gonna see it okay uh, another thing as well is the regions that orbex use the regions are basically everything we've just talked about 
the, the mesh, the land class, the textures, and the vector all in one package. So again, if you're using, uh, say, for instance, the UK region for England, you don't need the LC land class or vector data for Europe because it's going to be included in that small region. So if you're just going to go flying in England for a week, you can disable in your scenery every land class for Europe, every vector for Europe, uh, the global base even, and the elevation mesh, and just keep the region of the UK. And that will help load faster in your sim and help with performance because all that information is contained within Orbex. So that's the difference between how your sim is stacked up and made, okay? So how do we use this information if I am a general aircraft uh, aviator or a heavy 747 aviator? Well, if you're flying in a Cessna, you're only gonna go as high as 10,000 feet. You're probably gonna be flying VFR, visual flight rules, which means you need to see the towns, you need to see the railroads, you need to see the bridges, you need to see the motorways and the rivers below you and they need to be accurate, okay? They need to look real. I highly recommend you going with Orbex because even though uh, the global base vector and land class isn't as 100% accurate as mega scenery, it looks a lot better in terms of its visual accuracy. Um, buildings and forests and fields all look appropriate whereas in mega scenery at sort of 5,000 feet it's gonna look very flat and very pants okay so if you're flying at low level then put in Orbex products use the Orbex regions and disable everything else of Orbex or if you don't have the regions then you keep the land class the vector the global base and the elevation mesh in and just don't get the regions. You don't need the regions and the vector base land class and mesh because they're both one in the same. So to save your money, just buy global base vector open land class and, and get an elevation mesh put in and you don't need to buy the regions, okay? The regions are purely for VFR flying and if you've got them installed, then Un, un sort of check all your other ones. You don't need both at the same time. If you're flying a 747 or a 737 and you're at 35,000 feet for most of that flight, there is absolutely no point in having regions installed. Just uninstall them completely. You only need global base and open land class with the mesh included. You probably don't even need vector information. Okay, because you're at 35,000 feet, you can't make out exactly where a road is compared to a river. Okay, and to be honest, you're flying by a computer anyway with a navigation of its own, you're not flying by what you see visually. So, you can use Mega Scenery Earth, and if you happen to look out the window, you would see accurate land and it would look a lot better, and your performance would be a lot better as opposed to using Orbex products, which is gonna take your performance if you're flying a heavy plane like a PMDG aircraft, you need that performance for the aircraft because you're modeling accurate systems. So use Mega Scenery Earth for your land below. And when you come in closer to wherever airport you're going at, if you have a payware airport at that destination and at that takeoff point, then you're gonna, what you see around you is gonna look really juicy and really nice. And you're gonna take off into the air and start to see mega scenery earth around it and go, hmm, this looks nice. And then hit your 30 to 40,000 feet height, look out the window and go, this looks gorgeous and know it's accurate. And then when you come into land again, you're gonna come into your airport and it's still gonna look juicy and gorgeous and you don't even need Orbex, okay? Now, if you're like me, you like a bit of both, okay? One thing I find is have everything installed, but only activate the things you need. 
only if you're flying general aviation aircraft under 10,000 feet, you can use mega scenery earth and still get the performance, but you can also use the regions of Orbex, but you don't need global base vector and open class uh, land class used if you're using a region. And if you're not using a region, if you're flying in an area that um, doesn't ha have that region, then you don't need both mega scenery earth and Orbex to be working. It's either one or the other. So install your products, get your add-ons according to what aircraft you're going to fly. Okay. Um, airliner flights fly a lot higher than GA aircraft. They fly a lot lower. So Orbex is great for low level flying and Mega Scenery Earth is best for high level flying. Okay. And knowing how it's all stacked up in order will prevent errors from occurring. So here's the order in which everything needs to be stacked. You have your default scenery at the bottom of your scenery library, okay? Um, your, your, however, it, you know, whatever you're using, P3D, X-Plane, FSX, your default stuff that came with the game is at the bottom. Don't uncheck any of that, okay? Because that fills in the blanks for things that are missing from the others. Then you're gonna put your mesh on top of that, okay? You're gonna have your, uh, I use personally use the Pilots FS Global uh, Ultimate, um, but there is a freeware mesh available, or you can use your default mesh, it doesn't matter, but your mesh is the next thing in your scenery library, it's gonna be stacked on. Then it's your global base. Then on top of your global base is your vector for the world so you're going to have vector information for uh, America for the UK for Europe for Australia and that gets put on top of your FTX global base then on top of that goes your land class information okay and on top of your land class is where you start to put in your regions like if I was to have Orbex uh, UK the region for England that would go on top of land class okay then you put on your airports on top of that okay so you're you're stacking it like a cake now if you happen to have Orbex vector you don't need to worry about the order of everything you simply go into your FTX central uh, configurator and go to the vector tab click on that and click configure and it'll bring up your vector elevation tool and you just let that run. You click run and it will sort out your scenery library and the order that it needs to go in automatically and you don't have to worry. And then you click apply and exit. It might take a while if you've got a lot of stuff installed, but you know, whatever. So you don't have to worry about it. If you don't have the vector tool, Vector global of uh, global vector for uh, from Orbex does take a lot of computer resources, and if you don't wish to run that and you don't wish to use that sort of information because you're perhaps going to be flying airliners in the sky, um, and you still need to know the sort of order of your scenery library, well, this is how it goes. So the order in which it goes, if you're flying airline flights, you have your elevation mesh on the bottom. You have your open land class data on top of that, and then you have your global based textures on top of that. If you don't have vector, you don't need to worry about it. That's the order it goes in if you're flying airline flights. If you're flying general aviation flights, lower flights, then you have your mesh on the bottom, global base, then your vector, and then your land class, and then your airports. Airports always sit on the top, no matter what you're flying. So. That being said, we're going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you now understand the difference between what type of aircraft you're going to fly and what kind of add-ons you're going to buy. Um, and I hope it's given you a better understanding of how everything goes together. And if you do get errors in your sim, it's most likely because of your scenery library. Um, it's most likely because of the way you've installed it. You know, if you're installing fresh, start from the bottom and work your way to the top. So airplanes are your last thing that you install um, and the mesh or after you install the actual 
sort of simulator itself, your mesh is the first thing you install. Then you'll install all the global base textures. Then you'll install the land class data. Then you'll install the vector data. Then you'll install the regions. Then you'll install airports. Then you'll install planes and any utilities after that. Okay. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you all another time. Bye bye.